The purpose of this video is to explain how to use topography to set up uh, boundary conditions that will represent streams or surface water in GMS. What I'm going to do first is show an example that just uses a very idealized model. And to illustrate that, let's go ahead and import a JPEG picture that has the um, layout of, that we'll use for the model. So we go to open and the JPEG is called multiple reaches. And I'm going to put the reference points just outside of these blue lines. This is the map of the area and along the x-axis here it's uh, 200 meters. So for point number one, um, that'll be an x value of zero and a y value of, well, along y in that direction, it's 1,800 meters. So that'll be 1,800. And then point number two will be at zero, zero. And point number three over here will be at x equals 2,000. Or, yeah, 2000 and y equals 0. And we're going to want these to be in units of meters. So we set that up, and uh, the elevations will be in, in meters as well. So we'll hit OK. And there's the map. And what this shows here is the these are streams. Uh, and it's just very simple, obviously. Um, but what I wanted to do is show several streams, and we have a region here in between these streams uh, that we'll be uh, particularly interested in. Okay, so that's the map. And now we're going to make these streams conform to the topography. So we need to have a data set that represents topography. Well, if this was a real place, then we might be able to get a digital elevation map for this place. Um, the digital elevation maps, or DMs, are available for uh, really most of the world. And uh, that's what we'll use, in fact, with the more complicated model. But for this one, we're just going to use a simple version. Uh, and what I did was to make up a file right here of x y z so there are 15 points and you can imagine that these might be points that we've uh, located with a transit by surveying so this is the x location the y location and this is the elevation okay so i can import that into uh, gms by going to open and that's uh, topo2 and it's a text file so i go to open it and i get this screen here <clears throat> this shows the three columns so i can confirm that this is in fact the correct data file and it's tab delimited and now i need to select what these different columns are so the first column is x second column is y and the third column is the data set it has a value in this case it'll be the elevation so we import the data set and you can see the points right here and now what we need to do is generate a continuous surface from these points so to do that we're going to go up here these are the data that we just brought in it's called a 2d scatter data set and uh, we select topo2 and we're going to interpolate this or actually we're going to convert it to a 10 so select the 10 and hit OK and this is the result so this is now the topographic data set that we have from these points and what we've done is interpolate them 
using essentially uh, three-point problems. So this, these are all a set of three-point problems. These uh, are the, the topographic contour lines. And so we've done just this very simple interpolation, but the thing that we end up with is a continuous surface of elevation that results from these points. So we could probably see this a little bit better if we rotate it around. Uh, drag it down here so we can see it. So that's our, that's our topographic surface. Okay, so this is going to now be used to set up the elevations of streams. So if we look at this in map view, um, we're now ready to do the next step. Uh, I think what I'll do is put in a grid. So I'm going to use a grid frame. And the grid frame is, see it's under there. I'm going to turn off the tin here. So there's the grid frame, and you can see that it's corresponding to the size of the tin. Okay, so we'll generate the grid uh, by map to a 3D grid, and I'm going to make a grid that's 100 cells by 100 cells, and the origin will be, in, in the Z direction, will be at 150, and in the Z direction, it will be 50 units long, and there'll be five grid blocks in the Z direction. And so that would make these each 10. So that should be, yeah, like, or I think it would be sufficient to just go like that. Select number of cells, five, and an overall length of 50. Okay, so if we do that, now we should have a grid under there. So let's rotate it. That, that allows us to rotate it and look at this grid. Uh, probably be better if we just select the side view and so we don't see anything and that's because in display I have, if I go here to grid, I have the cell edges turned off. So if I turn them back on, there's the grid. Okay, It goes from an elevation of 150 to an elevation of 200 and the topographic surface starts at 200 and goes up. I think this maximum elevation is about 220. So we can see what that looks like in 3D. Okay, so we're on our way now. Um, what we've got to do now is put in the stream boundaries. So I'm going to turn off the tin and I think I'll turn off this grid. I don't really. I'll turn off the topo, uh, the scatter points, and then I'll turn off the grid for now too. Okay, so I'm going to go in and put the locations of the streams. And so I've set up a coverage, and uh, this is the coverage that I labeled streams. And if I just show you uh, here, it's uh, specified head is the uh, source sync type and uh, I will now go in and just draw in the locations of the stream. So the idea is that it follows these blue lines and it has to be in the inside of the grid. So the purple line marks the location of the grid. So I'm going to keep it inside of the grid and we'll go here like that. And maybe at this point it might be better to turn on the grid so we can see it. Oh yeah, we it's on but we turn it off right here. So this will work. Um, actually what I'll do is I'll turn it back on here and then I'll turn off these colors by making them transparent. Okay, so now we can see the location of the grid and we see the, the uh, coverage here that'll be the stream, that first line and now I'm going to draw in the other lines. So I select this and we just trace out this trajectory. Now over here, well we'll just go with this. I th think that this line really should be up a little bit further but we're just going to use this path right here and Okay, 
So those are the paths of the streams. And now what we need to do is uh, assign the heads uh, along these paths to be equal to the elevation defined by the tin. So the way to do that is, um, well, first of all, we'll go up here and we'll notice that the tin, that's the tin right there, and the name of it is tin. Not too, not too creative, but let's, let's change that. Let's call it tin topo. Just, just so we're clear about what's being shown there. And now we'll go back to streams and we'll go to the attribute table. And so the first thing we need to do is for all of those arcs that we just put in, we need to set the boundary condition to a specified head. Um, and then, let's see. Okay, so let's do it this way. For the arcs, we'll go right here and we'll select specified head for all of the arcs and we'll get that. Okay, so that tells us that we want the arcs to be a specified head type, but to say what the heads actually be, will be, we need to go to nodes and the nodes, these points that we put in, the elevation of those nodes will be defined uh, here and what we're going to do is select that little button there and that allows us to select 10 here and we're going to select that particular 10 the one called topo okay so now you know in the past what we might have done is just typed in what the head should be right here and we could do that I mean we could go and we could say the head is going to be 100 but instead of doing that, what we've done is selected 10 and this particular 10. We may have multiple 10s, but in this case we don't, but we want to make sure that we've selected the, the correct 10. And so now what's going to happen is that the location of each one of these points is going to be matched up to the location in the 10 and the value in the tin that will be used to specify the head. Then the way this boundary condition works is that, let's hit OK, so we're going to get each one of these node locations from the tin and then the boundary condition is set up to do a linear interpolation between the nodes. Okay, so I've set up recharge, I've already done that, um, if you're going to set this model up, so let's just take a look at it. So I set the recharge right there, and the attribute is going to be defined here in this polygon, and it's uh, 1 times 10 to the minus 9 uh, meters per day. Uh, yeah, actually, that would be the correct unit for meters per second, so we would want to adjust that. Uh, for meters per day. Um, we can do that later. Uh, K, uh, also I defined this polygon and under coverage I selected horizontal and vertical K and the attribute table for the polygon has these values and these are values in meters per second so again we would need to adjust these to be uh, meters per day. Okay, so we're getting there. We need to now include a mod flow simulation. So we'll just put that in, and I think that that should be all that we need to do. Now we can map this to mod flow, and we can see now the, uh, the see that purple line? That's the boundary condition. And let's see, we might be able to see a little bit better if we turn the grids off. So take the cell edges off. And actually we'll turn off the underlying base map. So there, those are the boundary conditions that are representing the streams that we created. And now we're ready to run it.
Okay, so it ran, and these are the contours, so that looks pretty good. And you recall that we made the uh, heads very transparent, so it's not showing up as a filled surface, but there's, there's the hydraulic heads. And uh, these streams are, are sloping in this direction, uh, so we can see a general flow of the groundwater uh, in, in this direction, but also we can see that these streams are gaining. That's the main functionality that I want to show you, but before I go, let's take a look at a couple of other things. One is the display. So this TIN data set that we've put in here has the ability to adjust uh, various different aspects of how it's displayed. So if we select uh, the TIN data, we can see we've got the triangle edges and vertices that we can turn off and on, uh, and the contours are shown here. So let's see, if I turn the, to the TIN back on, this TIN stands for, for Triangular Irregular Network. So you can see it's an irregular network of triangles. Uh, so yeah, we can change the display like this. We can uh, go to the tin uh, and turn off the triangle edges, for example. And these lines right here will now go away. Um, the points here, we can turn those off or on. And those are vertices, so those go away like this. And so now we just have the triangular network that's been contoured, but we don't see any of the uh, controlling features of the triangles themselves. We can also go here and adjust the contours. Uh, this is a screen that we've used before, and so it has similar effects. So you should go and uh, try experimenting around uh, with those different controls. The other thing that I should point out here is lighting. Um, we can control the lighting on this. Uh, if we go here and enable lights, then uh, this is the location of the light and we can move it around and get a location, uh, basically a light shining from different positions and that has uh, different features or different appearance on the, uh, on, on the topographic surface. And we can have multiple different lights here uh, to have different effects on uh, showing up the, the topography. Yeah, this allows us to control the locations of shadows and so forth. So give that a try. Uh, do some experimenting with that. And you can see there's the shadows. I'm going to just turn this light off for now. And uh, one more thing. If we take a look at this thing, this model from the side, and we go here and turn on the cell edges so we can see this grid. There's the computational grid. And let me pull this down a little bit. So you can see that the computational grid is this rectangular block and the uh, topographic surface is up here above it. So if we turn off the tin, then we can see that our model is rectangular. And what we've done then is by controlling the boundary condition uh, values, we've set the heads along these lines equal to the elevation from the tin. But we haven't actually changed the location of the boundary. Uh, it's still just in this upper layer that is horizontal. So one thing that we might want to do is use this topographic surface to change the location of the grid. So to do that, we can go back here to this 2D scatter set. And if we right click on topo, we can use uh, interpolate to mod flow layers. So the mod flow layer is this layer that we're using for computation. And so if we select that, we get this. And there's actually quite a bit that you can do here. But we're going to use just the most simple application where this Topo2 uh, data set that we've imported is mapped to the top elevation of layer 1. That's the default. We can do a variety of other things. We can 
map surfaces or uh, 2D data sets to uh, different uh, grid elevations. Uh, but right now we just want to do this simple thing, the topo2 scatter set, 2D scatter set, is going to be mapped to the top elevation of layer 1. So let's go ahead and try that. And so here's the result. You can see now that the, topo, the top of the grid is conforming to the uh, topography. Okay, it has kind of this prism effect. Okay, we also see we've got this outlier right here. And hmm, let's take a look. Yeah, so what happened here is the uh, tin or the, the 2D data set is, or the, the grid must be outside of the 2D data set. So we need to work on this right here. Probably need to bring the grid in a little bit or, or uh, make the 2D data set coverage extend out a little bit further. But that's the problem that we ran into with this, uh, this little glitch right here. But I think you get the idea that um, this is going to uh, allow us to have the capability to uh, create grids that conform to topography and then we'll also make it conform to the uh, subsurface hydrostratigraphy.